Don't have to talk while calculating, put it in the live chat. <laughs> so we're waiting for the next game as uh, team is uh, Riksu against Bolison. That will be interesting. He's I think ready. it's uh, in favor of Riksu, um, the discipline and uh, the, the speed they put in the water. Let's see what we have there. Um, uh, Riksu from Finland in blue and Polisen uh, from Sweden in white. And Riksu is already in ball possession here in the start. And they are going in on the basket of uh, Polisen. And they're coming from the close side and now from the front, pass to the close, from the open side. And already a diff uh, diff difficult, uh, I'll try to speak French, uh, a dangerous attack from the open side to the head of the um, goalkeeper. But the ball carrier was tackled away and Polisen tries to uh, keep the cluster together and hold the ball. But uh, Riksu is already again free with the ball and going into the attack and they're really fast with their hands and uh, with their swimming they're really agile and it's difficult for police and to follow them and keep them in check so again another attack and that's the third wave we see after uh, less than one minute and uh, the, the 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 push they we see on the on the goal of police is quite high but uh, Rixu lost the ball now and is turning the page and trying to swim uh, to the police and basket but Riksu succeeded on the empty basket and that's really dangerous with Riksu they are agile they can switch around in the middle Goal of the pool blocking. and going from defense number into attack 13. number 13 scored here from Riksu I don't even try to pronounce the names um, and it's uh, one and a half minutes in the first half Sweden against Finland and Finland is leading 1-0. I'm with you in a minute. I'm just no problem. I uh, continue you talk, calculating. You talk a lot. Calculate. I'm calculating. <laughs> I think the ball was outside. Free throw against uh, Rixu. Holding wide free throw. Ah, it was a holding. It was not outside. And free throw executed. And uh, stopped the ball carrier is stopped by uh, two heavy uh, players from Polisen. No, uh, sorry. Um, it was a free throw for Polisen. So, Rixu is again on the attack. Uh, is in the half of uh, the Swedish uh, pool side and trying to go through to the corner and now coming from the corner into the close side of the basket and there is a close dog fight there and the ball uh, pops out in the hands of a police player and try they try to swim through but uh, the Rixo players are right in front of them and the defense is in place and now we see the first chance to attack from police uh, on the on the finish basket now the, the, the goalkeeper from Finland is under attack, but uh, his, uh, his defenders or the four checkers tackled away the ball carrier and pushed him out of the danger zone. And Rixu is again in ball possession, intercepted by two police and players. This is a very physical game. It will be demanding for both teams. Here we go, Rixo player coming from above, throwing, uh, trying to pass uh, over the goalkeeper to the open side, but the pass was intercepted, call from the referee's grip to the mask, and there's a free throw against Rixo. White free throw attacking the mask, white free throw. So Polisen, Polisen is really uh, getting now into the game and they see they have uh, uh, one uh, goal to catch up and they try to put more pressure on the Riksu basket and I'm uh, um, positively surprised by the way they uh, play with this 
very dominant game. We saw Rixu was very dominant in his last games, but Paul is, an, is an unimpressed <coughs> and is uh, trying to to push harder on the Rixu basket. But I guess the, what we saw uh, with the first goal, the danger here is the fast counter attacks from Rixu uh, in the mind and in the fin strokes they have. They they really turn around and attack very fast. Call from the referee. Free throw against Polison. Blue free throw. Time, please. So, uh, yes, we have some trouble with the transmission. Um, I don't know what it is. I talked to the tech guys and they're working on it. Call from the referee. You were kicking. We had uh, kicking. Blue free throw. Free you were kicking the ball out. The blue free throw. Ball so out of the surface. Free, free fall, free throw against Polison. And they should be able to. Uh, uh, transmit a free throw. Trixel should be able to transmit a free throw fast into an attack, but it takes a little bit too long and there's one Polison player even waiting on the bottom pool. There's a discussion now. Blue free throw. Here we go. This, uh, yeah, and now one of the Rixel players uh, stole the basket from the Polison team. But it takes a little bit too long for Rixu to go and break through to their player. And uh, there was one, even was a second player trying to steal the basket uh, after his first one, but they didn't succeed and they're gone now. Um, and we have a uh, Rixu player holding uh, the defender right in front of uh, the basket, but it didn't succeed. And the defense, uh, I see it, police and playing quite well against this uh, dominant uh, Rixu. Um, don't know if they know them from uh, um, from uh, tournaments in the Nordic countries, but uh, they play quite well here. And Rixu has difficulties even uh, even though they lead 1-0. It's a really strong game. They know on the surface in the half of the uh, of police and on the surface, and there is a little bit of screaming. You hear it in the in the uh, live stream from the pool. Um, the ball fell down, was recovered by the players from uh, Polisen, and we go now to the Rixu basket, but the ball carrier was stopped by a Rixu player, and the ball is recovered by a Pol Polisen player. So this is, this is physical now, and they fight a lot, one on one, two on two. We have a cluster above the uh, Rixu basket. And this fighting on the surface, this clustering is, is uh, exhausting and it, it stops the game. And it, uh, it suddenly the ball falls down and it's in the hand of Polis. And that's dangerous because when you're not expecting um, the ball to fall down and the other players to be ready to go, uh, you could uh, create a gap and uh, this could mean a goal. So Polisen still in ball possession, just uh, on the open side around uh, the Rixu basket. And uh, Polisen is, is controlling the game right now here. Rixu is really difficult to get in possession of the ball or to interrupt the game. Now they did, but it's hard for them to break free and it's called from the referees. The referees are uh, stepping in much harder White now. White free throw, ball on surface. White free throw. White three throw. There's a little bit of more of tension, and they have uh, a call timeout, for a timeout team. for uh, Polisen. So one minute timeout. So let me catch up uh, with the uh, the, from yeah. the time plan. Oh, We're yeah. game number 29. <coughs> Here on Champions Cup uh, 2017, it's Champions Cup um, 29, and we have 14 nations in Berlin, uh, 14 men team and nine women team. It's the biggest uh, tournament in underwater rugby worldwide. 
Uh, we talked to uh, Julia Braunek, who's in the organization team of the World Cup uh, 2019 in Graz, in Vienna, and she said they try to top us. They try to get more uh, teams in the World Championship in Graz than we have here in the uh, Champions Cup. We'll see. One second left. Here we go. Rixu in defense, and it's a free throw for uh, Polisen and White from Sweden. <coughs> So Polison uh, is, is, is trying to pull it in a physical game they think they prefer. And here comes Riggs who is swimming really fast on the Polison basket. And we come from the, from the open side and the pass was going back, back and forth. But now the player is stuck, by uh, tackled by a Polison player. And it's really difficult to pass through them because when they tackle you, they really hold you like a, a, a Schraubstock. We say in German, it's where you fix heavy stuff. So it's... Uh, it's difficult to pass them, but now a Rixi player tried to steal the basket and uh, he was uh, holding uh, without ball uh, to the, the goalkeeper. The referee saw it and it was quite clear in the, in the live stream. So it's a free throw. Free throw against Rixu and the first half is over. So three, mi three minutes uh, break before the second half here in Champions Cup 2017 in Berlin in uh, uh, this game Riksu from uh, Finland in blue against Polisen uh, from Sweden in white it's a even watching it it's a demanding game and uh, it's tiring for these teams in the second day now um, th that's most of uh, mostly why the teams try to leave the pool area to get fresh air and to move around a little bit so as soon as they uh, finish the game they try to get uh, out of the pool area outside have fresh air move and uh, chill down so we have always co teams coming in and out here in the pool area but not many of them stay to watch the live stream here they go to the hotel as they told me and they try to follow us there So, what else can we talk? Yeah, I was talking to uh, um, Antje Franke, like I said, head of competitive sports in the BDST German Federation. Uh, we are quite a big federation and we were talking, uh, uh, she's coming from Fin Swimming with no connection to uh, underwater rugby. I showed her the first underwater rugby game and she played with me, with my team, uh, just to, to have a view on underwater rugby. And we were talking here a lot about how we can exchange knowledge from fin swimming into uh, underwater rugby. And she was watching the player from the surface and she told me there's a lot I can tell you what they're doing wrong here in the fin strokes. And that's interesting because for us it's so multidimensional what we have to do in underwater rugby. Uh, team sports, uh, control game, um, swimming, moving, three-dimensional planning, um, all this together so the, the basic layer of technical swimming for us, uh, the fin stroke, is, is not one of our first priorities, but it should be, because it makes us uh, fast, it makes the swimming effortless, and it prevents injuries, especially if you use these uh, carbon fins or these uh, fiberglass fins, they put a, a quite a, a pressure and a tension on your ankles, on your feet, and she told me a lot how can you prevent stress on your feet, what you have to do after every training, and I will do a workshop together with her where I try to harvest the knowledge and put back into the community to make us better fin swimmers. That will be really great, and I love everybody who wants to participate in that. As you can see, we have a lot of plans and no time. So, nine seconds left, and we go back in the game. My guess, uh, Rixu will uh, succeed, but uh, as I saw in the last minutes of this game, Polisen uh, put up a, a little bit of, of effort uh, to show Rixu what they can do. And I'm, I'm impressed by Polisen. I wouldn't have thought they do this well against uh, Rixu. I think uh, Polisen can be, uh, well, can be satisfied with their... Uh, or a presentation here on the Champions Cup. So we have a cluster in the middle of the pool on the surface and uh, again Rixu player breaking free, ripping out the ball 
and uh, swimming fast now to the right side to Pulisen and uh, the pass was already almost intercepted but the Rixu player they they work together quite well and getting in position now to go for the kill on the basket to execute their uh, their attack and to score but they're very good uh, intercepted and, and disturbed by the players from Polis and the four checking is heavy so they are uh, these two four four checkers from the police and team do really a good job to destroy and annoy uh, the attacking pattern of Rixu. That's uh, very well done. Rixu does not even manage to go ne to get near the police and basket. That's that's exhausting what these guys are doing there. Um, that's heavy work. That's not much beauty in it, but it's heavy work and it's uh, it's the, wo the the what makes underwater rugby players as uh, an apno sport uh, this demanding you're out of breath but you go down and even if you go down for some seconds and here's one Rixo player trying to steal the uh, the basket away from uh, the Paulison player and I think he succeeded it's a moving camera now I think yeah we have a Rixo player on the basket and there's there's was the attempt of the Rixo player on the basket trying to get up to create a gap but one of the police and the uh, guards of the uh, uh, goalkeepers switched into this little gap and uh, closed it very well done and right now I see uh, Polisen doing a great job to keep Rixu on the run and um, if they would have played from the start like that I don't see Rixu uh, succeeding in uh, putting the ball in the basket that was really good luck for Rixu because right here in this second half I see Polisen even um, the the even though they are under attack, but they uh, do a good job to disrupt this uh, play we saw in the other games of Rixu. So it's interesting to see the teams, how they change, uh, what Lorena already mentioned, depending on the, uh, on the opponent they have in the water. And right here, Polisen seems to have a, a remedy against uh, this this uh, forceful, uh, very eloquent attacking machine of Rixu. And uh, Polisen even breaks free, free of the ball, but uh, he doesn't have a, a colleague being ready to, to um, get the ball from him to pass the ball to. So back again, Rixu in attack and six minutes 42 left. And eventually, I guess in a combination like this with New York so much under pressure, uh, we will see a goal, even though um, Polisen does an amazing job here, but it's, uh, yeah, here we go. Well done by Rixu, it's a 2-0 with uh, oh six minutes 20 15. left. And, well, Polisen really surprised me and I wouldn't have thought they put so much energy in the water after they played already many times. And after they, uh, uh, they haven't seen that strong in the tournament, call from the referee, holding without ball, free throw against Polisen, no, against Rixu. White free throw, attacking the mask, white free throw. Ah, uh, holding, was not holding, was attacking the mask. And Polison is on the attack. But uh, the defense of Rixu was not, was tested one time, I think, in this game, but not the, that heavily. And that's a, that would have been a good chance if the player from uh, Polison would see it. I've seen the pass under his uh, body, but he did see it too late, was already under attack before he saw the ball. And uh, but now they are uh, put a lot of pressure on the close side on the police on the Rixu basket. But well defended, and uh, we see a Rixu player popping out of this cluster with uh, with the ball. And again fighting on the surface. I don't see, ah, oh, Polisen is in the uh, ball position. And they are going quite dynamically 
uh, in direction, but almost the whole team of Rixu is down to stop them. When they see the turn the page, uh, it's in Rixu possession of the ball now in the middle of the pool. They go up and uh, change uh, at once, so fresh players come in. They, the Rixu seems to be a little bit uh, more on the on top of Polis, and then uh, Polis can uh, can can hold against Rixu here. And uh, it's earned uh, to Rix where they win the game. But uh, Pulisson showed what they have in store even on this uh, second day on the Champions Cup 2017 here in Berlin. Three minutes, 43 left. And both teams will be tired after that game. It's very physical. We saw a lot of uh, uh, bodily fights, physical fights. A lot of one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one fights with a lot of body contact. So a little bit more than three minutes left. And I think Rixu can play it cool now. They're leading 2-0 Rixu from Finland in blue and Polisen from uh, Sweden in white and here we have a Rixu player on the close side he's passing behind his back which is uh, a magic passing and our Rixu player is stealing the basket from Polison didn't succeed the Polison uh, goalkeeper is already back on the basket but the attacks are really constantly so we have a little bit of fighting in the middle of the pool but most of the time we spend at the Polison uh, basket and for this only two caught goals is quite an achievement And that was a little bit of pushing without ball from a, a Rixu player on the defense of Bullison. But it wasn't called. The, the overview of uh, Rixu is quite good. They are uh, there in time where they have to be to receive the pass. And uh, they are coming in really constantly. It's like a clockwork going you don't see them waiting very long for uh, another player to show up to be able to pass the, the ball to. So yeah, no surprise here in the uh, last one and 40 minutes and we have a Rixu player sitting on the police and basket could be another goal but I don't think it has to be and police and will be uh, will be fine with the 2-0 I think they played very well in my opinion call from the referee blue free throw ball out of the surface blue free throw blue free throw so a free throw for Rixu against Polis and then it's one minute left. Probably the last chance for one minute. A last chance for the um, Rixu team to put a three in front of the Polis and zero. Call from the referee, grip to the to the uh, equipment deck Time referee out. is calling timeout for Rixu timeout for Rixu again call from the referee looks like the ex execution of the Ah, one of the police and player didn't realize there was a timeout. He was uh, trying to score. So the reason for the free throw thing, as far as I heard, it was a uh, hard play um, from a uh, police and player, I guess. I think the... So six was seconds. Was, was war das jetzt? Du hast nichts gezeigt. Was war das? Teams get ready. 
Two meter. Two meter. No, it's ponies on the executing the free throw. And it's 30 seconds, last chance for Polison to score in this game and at least to put a, a one on their, uh, on their side. But the, the Polison player, but the Rixel player is tackled away and he's holding on to the ball really tight. Call from the referee, three throw against Rixu, five seconds left, three, two, throw. one, zero. Him over, so it's a 2 0 um, for Rixu against Polison. So, Lorena, my love, uh, what does that mean? Copenhagen? <laughs> so, we have in the next game, we have yes, Akaren Akaren against Copenhagen. Akaren against against Copenhagen. Copenhagen. So, like I said, um, I had a talk with uh, Antje Franke, Finn Swimming and Head of Competitive Sports in the German BDST, the German Federation. I wrote them down. Hello. 2-0. <laughs> I'm back. Okay, perfect. And uh, we have to get more into the basics of our sports. Um, I also... Uh, we had a little workshop at the Underwater Rugby Academy <coughs> in the uh, topic about injuries and a uh, lot of uh, injuries are in the fingers in Underwater Rugby. Um, fingers. Fingers. And... Uh, like this? Yeah, like thumbs, uh, fingers, <laughs> torn. Uh, or uh, A lot of it is uh, from uh, you touch the tiles or the ball and uh, you get uh, uh, capsule res, I don't know what the word, what uh, carolage, um, carolage. Uh, yeah, you rip the, the, the so capsule. There's, the a, there's a capsule in the, in the, the joint articulation. and uh, it's broken, so uh, it's really hurtful and it takes three months to half a year to heal out. Most of the players just tape it and go on playing, which can, uh, uh, can uh, um, well, Hurt your, Normally, your yeah, your, your fingers are So what I found out, first of all, warm up before you play on the water rugby. What I found out in uh, uh, climbing, they do this, just extend your fingers as far on the other side as you can. Hold, grip, extend, hold, grip, extend, hold, grip. Move your fingers, put them together like this. Go like this up to so warm them up stretch them and another thing um, i found from uh, contact sports in the fighting area um, the the monks in the shaoling they tr uh, did strengthen their joints by punching sand like this in the sandbox or punching it because bones under uh, not that heavy don't punch walls but punch something that can uh, absorb, uh, the impact. Yeah, absorb the impact and don't hurt you and don't do it with all the force do it, uh, uh, the the consistency is what counts so this technique in the shaolin like yeah like this thank you for showing me uh, this technique in the shaolin is called uh, uh, the thousand uh, stroke strength so it strengthens the the fingers and i do it in a in a pot uh, with uh, with beans, so I started with beans, and I just punch into them with the fingers. And since then, I have to really tell you, I have no more uh, uh, injuries in my okay. fingers. I had always problems with the fingers, but since then, my fingers got really strong. So that would, would be another way to, to influence our sport and to do something that makes One minute. us better One minute. and less produce less injuries as a uh, to prevent injuries. Sydney is in the house. Hey, Sydney! Sydney on the water rugby is there. We are too. Ready? Welcome. So, 